development history and policy directions for sewerage in Korea. Through this lecture, you'll be able to understand the development process of sewerage in Korea and understand notable incidents. I'll talk about the historical development of the Korean sewerage system, problems with the Korean sewerage system, and policy directions for sewerage in order. Historical Development of the Korean Sewerage System Development History and Policy Directions for Sewerage in Korea The saying, he who controls the water controls the country, shows how inseparable water is from our daily lives. The history of sewerage began as early as the 7th century BC in the ancient development center of Babylon. In a palace on the island of Crete, there are traces of a flush toilet connected to distribution piping. Well, in Mohenjo-daro, a leading city of the Indus River civilization, excellent city planning produced, precise layout of houses and city buildings, with brick sewers following along streets. There are traces of each house being connected to brick or porcelain piping. Also, just as it's said that all roads lead to Rome, you can read about the various traces of road construction, stone construction, and aqueducts, and sewer construction in the Roman Empire. In Korea, the relics of sewerage called Togwen from the Pictou dynasty have been found, and records of river improvement and construction on Tungitan stream in 1412 should be seen as the beginnings of sewerage. Main work on sewerage has been carried out since the 1960s. Sewerage is a primary public work for extending average life expectancy. In 2008, the British Medical Journal did a survey of the greatest medical achievements of the past 160 years, and sewerage was ranked number one. The survey was given to 11,000 respondents, and clean water and sewerage received the most votes. A prime motivator for this was the 1854 discovery that cholera was a waterborne illness, and 80% of the disease that people of the time suffered from was waterborne. After the Korean War, economic growth and rapid industrialization, urbanization, and expanded provision of flush toilets led to worsening sewage water quality and waterway pollution. As the need for wastewater treatment system improvement became clear, in 1966, the Sewerage Act was enacted. In 1976, Korea's first sewage and wastewater treatment plant, the Chungichung Wastewater Treatment Plant, was built with a capacity of 150,000 tons a day. Later, the government made a variety of water management policies and expanded funding for improvements due to incidents like the opening of the 1988 Seoul Olympics and the 1991 Nectung River Fennel Pollution Incident. In addition to growth of facilities, in 2002, focused work began on sewerage maintenance, which had until then received little investment. In 2005, the target year for this work, the sewerage service rate reached 80 percent, and after ensuring the concentration of wastewater inflow, it was necessary to increase the supply rate of sewerage piping to increase the treatment efficiency of wastewater treatment plants. The government's work for continuous growth to promote job creation and the use of civilian creativity and efficiency constitute a comprehensive investment plan. The biggest recent change is that the management of water quantity, water quality, and disasters management, which had formerly divided between the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transport was unified under the Ministry of Environment. This is expected to solve the problems of water management policy, redundant work between ministries, overinvestment, and inefficiency. The chart you see here shows Korea's economic growth and the percentage of the population served by water supply. As you can see, as of the end of 2019, the percentage of the population served by sewerage was 94.3%. Until the 1970s, flooding prevention and sewerage in Korea were mostly carried out with the installation of combined sewers that could collect rainwater and sewage together. Later, problems with river water quality appeared and with rapid urbanization due to industrial development. Treatment at wastewater treatment plants was concentrated. In the early 2000s, the percentage of the population served by sewerage reached 70%. Since the 2000s, 
due to strengthened standards for treated sewage discharge into rivers and water quality standards for discharge. The number of facilities which have introduced advanced treatment procedures to remove nutrients which impact the environment like nitrogen and phosphorus has increased. Concentrated investment was made in replacing existing combined sewers that carried both sewage and rainwater with separate storm sewers and sanitary sewers. In this way, Korea built a sewerage system appropriate for an advanced country in a short time. If you look at the major indicators for sewerage from 1992 and 2019, the percentage of the population served by sewerage rose more than 55% to 94.3%. This was accomplished with a total of 4,216 public wastewater treatment facilities, 681 of which have a treatment capacity of 500 tons or more. Most importantly, wastewater treatment has been used to greatly improve discharge water quality. In sewerage, starting with the year of sewerage refurbishment in 2002, widespread work has been carried out all over Korea on improving the sewerage system and total pipeline length has been increased almost 10 times to 160,000 kilometers. This length is enough to circle the globe four times. Then what has happened to the main functions of sewerage and removal of pollutants? Since the Sewerage Act was enacted in the 1970s, piping was installed with the main purpose of interception to prevent urban flooding and remove pollutants. Collected rainwater, and sewage were gathered at a wastewater treatment plant, and attention was mostly paid to primary organic matter treatment. Later, discharge water quality standards were gradually strengthened, and advanced treatment facilities began being introduced in order to meet them. With these facilities, treatment of nitrogen and phosphorus began to occur. With the protocol to the London Convention coming into effect in March 2006, since 2011 dumping at sea has been impossible. Since then, a variety of methods for reusing sewage residue have been investigated, and at a number of treatment plants, it is being reused through burning or drying as green soil to raise earthworms or as land covering material according to local conditions. In addition to the removal of organic material and nutrients, which had been the focus of wastewater treatment. Removal of minimally harmful substances that occur biologically or chemically has been appearing. This is the sewerage budget as of the end of 2019. Total funding for sewerage was $10.3 billion, and by finance category, charges are the highest at 28%. By use, treatment plant maintenance was the highest at 32%. When a new sewerage facility is built, government funding is provided at a level, depending on the size of the local government. For special and metropolitan cities, 30% is provided, while for cities and counties, 70% is provided. Problems with the Korean Soaring System What problems are now being faced by the Korean Sewerage System, which is a growth leader worth paying attention to? I've broadly divided them into lifestyle safety, lifestyle, inconveniences, and facility expansion. First, I'll talk about lifestyle safety. Sewerage pipes are buried underneath the ground and are not visible. Korea has 160,000 kilometers of sewerage piping, an enormous amount. This growth through sewerage supply projects focused on the supply has led to serious problems. In a word, the problem is aging piping. As of the end of 2019, age piping accounted for 45% of the total, and the amount is rising quickly every year. If sewer cracking or external intrusion occur in aged pipe, it can lead to weakened ground with voids and eventually sinkholes. There is a need for regular checks of piping and retrofitting or replacement of old piping. Next, there are lifestyle inconveniences. There is the problem of urban odors due to aged piping or sewage stagnation. The role of sewerage is to effectively eliminate sewage and rainwater. But now that we've achieved a high percentage of the population served by sewerage, we need to go beyond that with measures to eliminate odors. Finally, there are facility expansion and improvements, just as in sewerage, 76% 
the wastewater treatment plants that serve as the final destination. And treatment facility for wastewater are aged facilities at least 20 years old. Of course, some of these facilities have been improved or refurbished. But with discharged water quality standards continually getting stronger and growing quantities of wastewater treated, facility expansion and improvement is now necessary. Policy Directions for Sewerage The main sewerage policy directions being pursued by the government to solve the problems I just mentioned can be divided into six major categories. Improvements to aged wastewater treatment facilities. Improvement of old sewers. Improved handling of untreated wastewater during rainy weather. Improved management of discharge water quality from treatment plants following the introduction of TOC standards. Improved management of energy at wastewater treatment plants through methods such as the use of sewage heat. Introduction of a financial management system. First is the improvement of aged wastewater treatment facilities. In Korea, there are 580 aged wastewater treatment facilities over 20 years old, which is 76% of the total. There is a risk of these aged facilities causing reductions to the wastewater treatment efficiency rate due to corrosion, to public facilities, and the aging of various equipment. In Korea, under the Sewerage Act, technical evaluations of wastewater treatment plants must be carried out every five years after construction is completed for the improvement of aged facilities. And as the number of improvements needed grows, the expense is becoming quite high. Because of this overall improvements, modernization to all facilities needs to be considered. For this reason, the government has prepared guidelines for evaluating the viability of modernizing wastewater treatment plants and is systematically promoting them for aged facilities and placement of sewage treatment facilities underground and improvement of upper portions for environmental friendliness, including the convenience of residents. Second is aging sewage pipeline. Just as with public wastewater treatment plants, period technical evaluations of sewage pipelines must be carried out in order to identify and improve aged pipeline. In addition, a few years ago, the government identified the key cause of numerous sinkhole incidents caused by ground subsidence as sewerage piping and undertook detailed surveys of old sewerage piping in order to make improvements. And this work is being continuously carried out as repair methods, excavation replacement, and non-excavation replacement in areas like cities where excavation would be difficult are being used. Next is improved management of untreated wastewater in the event of rain. As I said earlier, early wastewater treatment in Korea used combined sewers, which carried sewage and rainwater together. And in 2002, the year of sewerage facilities, concentrated investment was put into piping to create a separate sewer system in which rainwater and sewage are kept apart. However, many areas still have combined sewers. And in these areas, when there is rainy weather, some wastewater cannot be taken into a wastewater treatment plant and is instead released into rivers through storm overflow chambers, creating river water quality problems. Because of this, in 2021, a law was passed requiring that when untreated wastewater is released into a river without being taken into a wastewater treatment plant, its amount and water quality must be measured and records must be kept in order to create systematic wastewater management measures. The law will go into effect in 2022. Next is changes to standards for discharge water quality. In Korea, there were six categories for discharge water quality standards for public wastewater treatment plants. Biochemical oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand, suspended solid, total nitrogen, total phosphorus, and coliform bacteria. Of these, on January 1, 2021, chemical oxygen demand was changed entirely to a TOC standard. The reason is that when chemical oxygen demand is measured, a manganese method is used. But with this method, the oxidation rate of organic material is low, so it can't measure total biological matter content, including non-degradable organic material. 
meaning it has limited applications for managing organic matter. In contrast, TOC is an indicator of total organic carbon and measures the amount of carbon dioxide produced through processes like high temperature combustion, so it can measure total organic matter content including non-degradable organic material in real time, increasing the efficiency of water quality management. This standard was adopted in public water treatment facilities as of January 1, 2021, allowing the government to precisely measure the concentrations of organic material released into rivers in order to establish effective policies and efficiently manage water quality. Improvements to water quality through appropriate treatment of organic matter released into rivers will allow for safe water use and ensure a healthy water ecosystem. The TOC standards for each receiving water body are shown on this chart. Next is a plan for increasing energy independence at wastewater treatment plants. In Korea, the government is promoting 2050 net zero as a policy according to which there will be zero net emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050. Greenhouse gas emissions occur throughout society, but in wastewater treatment facilities, they are produced through generation of power to run the facility and microbial reactions. However, wastewater treatment plants large areas and the resources of sewage can be used to create new energy. This means it is necessary to continuously promote and improve the energy independence of wastewater treatment plants. The two main types of work that need to be done for energy independence are reducing greenhouse gas emissions from treatment plants and energy production using the resources of treatment plants. Regarding reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from treatment plants, carbon emissions can be reduced through process optimization. Examples of this can include optimizing operation of ventilators, etc. by monitoring the condition of intake water. Power resources at wastewater treatment plants include digestion gases, small hydro, sewage heat, solar power, and wind power, and major use cases currently being carried out include trial projects for solar power generation and the use of sewage heat. Finally, there's the construction of a financial management system Financial management projects for wastewater combine all information from wastewater facilities and turn it into data to predict remaining useful life and analyze priorities for improvement of public wastewater facilities for systematic management. Currently, two local governments have prepared a standardized financial management system and used it as a basis for developing a financial management system and a manual for financial management in wastewater which there are plans to apply on site. We've examined highlights of the development history of sewerage in Korea and major policy directions being pursued. Sewerage is infrastructure with an important social role, turning discarded water back into a resource. Installing infrastructure isn't the end. These facilities need continuing care and improvements, and it's important to have a long-term plan for carrying this out. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.